Before we get into more things, mm -hmm. how did Jackie and Megan get here? I drove here. Oh my god! <laughs> my car is in your parking lot. Hey, your your thing. The Batmobile. Yeah. I call it the Batmobile. You ain't gotta say all that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, how did we get here? So you tell me. So Jackie, um, I met Jack. <clears throat> I reached out to you on Instagram. Instagram. I was not going to respond. Okay. That's rude. Um, it wasn't personal. Yeah, because you... Go ahead. Go ahead and tell them what you no, thought I'm a, about I'm me. A, what I thought about you? Mm -hmm. I thought you was just a regular influencer. <laughs> just out here talking about Jesus, but you ain't know him. That's what I thought. Yeah. Well... I was, I was judging you. Because I, I, I didn't... You would come up on my... Like my TikTok and stuff like that. And I saw some stuff, but most of it I would just swipe up. Like I, <laughs> Because you know that's a thing. It's becoming it's becoming a thing for people to be Christians, mm -hmm. right? So I just I didn't pay any attention to it, and then you left a comment on a post, and like fifty people. It was like, yeah. So I I I I was I was in the airport, and I told Preston about it, and I prayed, and it was crazy. As soon as I prayed, literally, I'm I'm in Sky Club. I pray. Somebody text me. And said, hey, I saw uh, Megan Ashley say some, some, some. I think you should be on there. I think, like, they're really, like, doing, like, good work. And it was weird because I just <laughs> prayed. And so it felt like, oh, maybe God really wants mm -hmm. me to do this thing. And so then I, you know, I was like, we're going to have to get on the phone call. Because I'm, yeah, so I'm not finna just say, say yeah, just because y'all popular. We're not doing that. Because I've done that before and it didn't work. Because I get on these platforms and I tell the truth and people haven't prepared themselves for mm -hmm. <laughs> what that means for them. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, Oh, I'm gonna lose ads because she was talking <laughs> about homosexuality. I'm going to lose resources. Oh no, we're not doing that. So I told, I prepared you. you I did. said, you did, you prepared me and you were very I honest. I said, do not have me on this show. If, but in that conversation, Sorry. I was sharing with you yes. where I was and what I felt like the Lord was doing in me, yes. what he was showing me. It, was, it came across very sincere. Uh, uh, I didn't think that was affirmation. You, th you thought that was affirmation what I just did? Yeah. Oh, okay. That wasn't affirmation? Uh, you said I was sincere. It was a fact. But I mean, that's, okay, that it's, be it's affirming. so affirming. Yeah. A fact yeah. can be affirming yes. if it's a good fact. Yeah. <laughs> if it's a bad, then it's not. And it's rebuking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it was affirming. Yeah. Um, but we talked and then um we we did a podcast together and um I think that that conversation that you and I were having mm -hmm. on that on that episode, I think was one of the moments that I think people started to see something different in me. Mm. I think it was like, oh, did something's say that? happening. It looked it, a lot of people attribute it back to that conversation. Like at that point, I could see that Megan was uh, changed. There was something that was changing mm -hmm. in her, um, just based off of some of the things that we talked about. And then after that, we met and and had lunch the next day. The next day, yeah. and we um we went and had lunch, and you were like, and we talked more through a lot of stuff, and you were like, I just think the Lord wants me to help you <laughs> and walk with you in this season. <laughs> and I was so grateful because I think that whole conversation, it was basically a cry for help. A little bit. I was like, I am struggling here, here, yeah. here, here. I don't know what to do. Yeah. You know, I, this is happening. I don't know how to navigate through this. Mm -hmm. And um, and from there, you know, we have cultivated a friendship. Mm -hmm. And And I tell you this all the time, and I'll tell the audience that um, you were – you are the first person I feel that I have been friends with as an adult mm -hmm. that I've cultivated a healthy Christ centered yeah. friendship as an adult. Yeah. And that has been super transformative mm -hmm. and redeeming in what way? Because, um, <clears throat> especially going through all the things last year, mm -hmm. I don't think that, there was a time where I didn't think that I deserved 
that mm -hmm. um, or that I could ever have it, mm -hmm. a friendship in that way. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, but the fact that I've been able to cultivate, we've been able to cultivate this relationship yeah. and it being Christ centered, it's just been so radically different from all the other relationships I feel like I've. Yeah and friendships that I've had yeah. and because we can relate on so many different for sure things. Yeah. Um, Cause it, it makes sense. It's still random. It, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's really random and unplanned. I feel like we have these moments all the time. Where we're like, bro, why is this a thing? How is this a thing? How is this a thing? Yeah. Why? Is, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. And, and I think friendship for me has been so difficult. Um, I think my entire life, mm. but definitely in the last few years. And I think it's just been hard to connect to people I can trust. Yeah. But not only just people I can trust, people I actually enjoy. Because there was a season in my life where I was like, Lord, <laughs> like, I feel like you making me be friends with people who are Christians, but I don't like them like that. <laughs> it ain't even like, it's just. There's no connection or. Yeah, yeah. it's just, I'm bored. <laughs> And, then, and I was starting to feel like maybe this is what it's like to share in God's sufferings is to be not friends with people that you're actually not compatible with. Y'all yeah. just got the same Holy Spirit. But I just, I'm uninterested. I'm uninterested. Unless we talk about the Bible, I, there's nothing else to talk. So I think to, I think to connect to somebody that I actually like. Yeah. It's just is different. special. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think being able also like, I'm not a wife anymore, but I, I understand what it's like yes. to be a wife. Yeah. So I can I can identify in that way. I'm a mom. Mm -hmm. So we can identify with those things, right? And then but what really is the like the icing on the cake what for is me it? is I'm, the I'm fact scared. what? What do you think I'm about to say? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we rebuke people. We both rebuke people. That's what I thought you were supposed to say. No? I'm not gonna say that. Okay. It's it's the <laughs> fact that we can identify with with each other's suffering when it comes to a, being a public yeah. figure. Yeah. And I don't think people understand it's hard. how extremely hard it is yeah. to process things yeah. in front of everybody. Yeah. And the things that I feel like, especially within the last couple of weeks, that. I feel like I've had to endure have been really hard mm -hmm. and it's being, it's even harder to do it in front of everybody yeah. and hold the responsibility of my response. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. And it's not like there is a whole slew of people yeah. that understand that. Yeah. To, to literally be processed, have the Lord develop you mm -hmm. in front of everybody. Yeah. Now it's a, it's a different call. It's a different burden. It's a different cost. But I do, I think seeing how you handle life and seeing how you've handled <laughs> life, like I think my respect for you has went like way up there. Because uh -huh. I already respected you, but it's just like, you know, when I had came over and we was processing and stuff like that, and I went home, I was like, Megan really loved the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> like she... She's really committed to him, like in a yeah. real way. Like you not, you not out here just talking. No. It's really you not here with the mics and the green <laughs> pillows and the little half half moon thing. And you not out, you not out here just not the half moon carpet. Don't come from my rug. I think it's very nice. <laughs> it's very fit fitting and suitable for your brand. But like, I just I respect you a lot, and I I think that matters to me. Yeah to be connected to people that I value and respect. Yeah. Because it, I think I'm in a position too, oftentimes, where I feel like I'm always leading. Mm -hmm. And so I think to even be connected to somebody who I I would welcome your criticism. Mm. I would. Because it's like, no, she, she has the right. Now, all Christians have the right to rebuke, okay? I'm not saying that. But I am <laughs> saying not everybody deserves access that in part. that way yeah. and i think the way you move is like nah, you you have access to me and and what i i will thank you for saying that but i also have learned a lot from the things that you have shared mm -hmm. with me right. because the things that i know that you have encountered mm -hmm. privately mm -hmm. and then watch how you move publicly they have no idea <laughs> my lord 
I have, and this is why I say your integrity, like the, I have so much respect for you because your integrity, bro, you have been, cause there have been situations that you've told me about that have pissed me off. Right. Many of them. That have, pit, I went, y'all, we were at, out, out to eat one time and Jackie and I were processing something mm -hmm. and I'm going off on her for giving <laughs> people great. <laughs> you really were mad. Too. I was so upset. Yeah. I'm like, you are, but it's it's because you love the Lord. Yeah, because I think at some point I was like, so what do you want me to do? Yeah, you were like, so <laughs> hate them? Like, what do you? I don't know what you want me to do. But I get it. I can I can appreciate the protection. Yeah, I don't like people messing with people that I love. I get number it. one. Um. So yeah, that's how we became friends. Yeah, basically. And we out here. Yeah. Okay. What's next? So, okay, I want to go back to something that you said. <laughs> I want to go back. I just wanted to give them a kind of... Some context. Some, some context on like, how the heck did we get here? But I want to go back to something that you said, because I feel like this is a thing. Okay. You said, uh, you say boundaries, but it's mm. really impatient, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is a really big thing in our culture right now is everyone setting their boundaries. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't serve you, mm -hmm. let it go. Mm -hmm. That don't serve me no more. If mm -hmm. it don't serve me, if mm -hmm. it don't. And I feel like language like that. I even heard. I heard somebody, and I think I talked to you about this before, but I heard um, somebody, and they were on a podcast, and because everybody has podcasts, and <laughs> and they were like, they were boasting about how selfish they are. Okay. And and this idea of just doing what you want and what serves you only yeah and it feels like we are breeding narcissism Narcissists. yeah in our culture and society <clears throat> and you said something to me yesterday about the danger of what we are actually it's terrifying yeah so i think i think boundaries are fair right so, and they're needed. Yeah. You you got the reality that, you know, Jesus had twelve and then he had the three and then like he wasn't he didn't he didn't have like everybody didn't have access to him in the same way. Mm -hmm. So I think that is that is stewardship to some degree mm -hmm. to recognize, okay, these are the people who I remember somebody said, like, you got people that, you know, they can be in your yard. You got people that can be in your living room. You got very few people that can be in your bedroom, right? Yeah. I remember talking to Dr. Sarita. She was like, you got friends in ministry, misery, and what was it? No, meals, ministry, misery. Mm -hmm. She was like, meals, Jesus ate with everybody. Like, you can be hospitable to everybody, right? Ministry, he didn't do ministry with everybody. Mm -hmm. He had the 12, right? So you got a few people you do ministry with. Misery, three, right? So those are boundaries. Mm -hmm. But I think the underbelly of it is the love of self. And I, I think we have to be, we have to be careful with language that is very easy for us to like, how do I say it? Anything that's easy for the flesh to do, we need to be on guard. Mm -hmm. It really is easy for me to like cut people off. It really mm -hmm. is easy for me to be like, ah, it, like that's an easy thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I need to move against what is natural to the flesh mm -hmm. just in case I end up living like Satan. Because <laughs> <laughs> Philippians 2 <laughs> says, have this mind. Mm -hmm. That was in you, that was in Christ Jesus, who did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, yeah. taking on the form of a servant, da 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 What was the whole argument? The whole argument is that Jesus did the absolute most in service to other people. Yeah. That's the mind we're supposed yeah. to have. Consider your neighbor better than yourself. Then you got the law. What does the law hinge on? Two things. Love the Lord God with all your heart, mm -hmm. mind, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Right? So those things are not natural to us. Mm -hmm. And so I am I am concerned <laughs> when the yeah. messaging from the pulpit is all oriented around protecting myself and serving myself. And that, like that's it's, it's giving the last days. You want me to read it? Yep. I can read it. Were we in 2 Timothy yet? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but no. 
this hard times will come in the last days uh-huh. for people will be lovers of self and i'm gonna scroll down comma because I, I preached this last time <laughs> but we're doing a, a redo verse five <laughs> holding to the form of godliness but denying its power and so paul, uh, paul talking to timothy lists all these things i'll just read it for people lovers of self lovers of money boastful proud demeaning disobedient to parents ungrateful unholy unloving irreconcilable slanderers without self-control brutal without love for what is good traitors reckless conceited conceited My God. lovers <laughs> of pleasure rather than lovers of god comma holding to the form of godliness and so this list of character traits mm-hmm. and behavior can be assumed to be talking about people in the world but he says these are people who look like christians okay right and so i really think that a, a lot of uh the preaching and teaching that has this kind of self-centered hermeneutic where the text centers me or the application centers me or the illustration centers me like that is lover of self energy. And we should be, we should be afraid of that. And we should have what? Nothing to do nothing with these people. Can I say something about that? Mm -hmm. I've been studying like prosperity, neo prosperity teaching. And I think one of the appeals of it, is that it has a therapeutic focus. Mm. And so the teaching, if you really listen to a lot of it, it sounds like good counseling, which tells you that people need wisdom, so they don't know what to do, Mm -hmm. right? People want to know themselves, Mm -hmm. which is legitimate, and people need parents. I think we're an unparented generation. My God. And so I think some of the teaching is, is... it feels like we're being trained to, to be better people, mm-hmm. which is fair and legitimate. But I don't want to be a better person that's actually a faithless person. My God. Because the Bible also says whatever is not done from faith is still sin. So let's say you get the business. Mm-hmm. Let's say you become a great entrepreneur. Let's say you become a better friend. Let's say you walk your dog twice a day. <laughs> let's say you do all the like outwardly ethical things, but mm-hmm. it's detached from faith in God. You're still going to hell literally that felt harsh but it, but it wasn't it, no it wasn't because it's true because it's facts yeah. and so i think we have preaching that are making people better people but not more holy people my god because christ isn't being the one who's exalted christ isn't in the illustrations christ isn't in the application christ is he ain't even in y'all text when he actually is in the text so we just missing him where is he oh my goodness All right, guys, listen, these days, a lot of people are learning about all the benefits of fasting, like weight loss, mental and physical performance, and gut health, but they worry about the whole not eating part. Well, that's exactly why Prolong was created. Introducing Prolong, a revolutionary plant-based nutrition program that nourishes the body while making cells believe they're fasting. Researched and developed for decades at the University of Southern California Longevity Institute and backed by leading U.S. medical centers, Prolong helps promote healthy blood sugar, supports cardiovascular health, and reduces abdominal fat. But Prolong isn't a diet. Prolong is science. Science based on Nobel Prize winning discoveries in medicine. And this all starts with Prolong's five-day program. Snacks, soups, and beverages all designed to keep your body in a fasting state. It's unlike anything you've ever experienced, you guys. Listen, if I was going to start a nutrition program, Prolong is exactly what I would use. It's convenient and backed by Nobel winning science, and it works. It's no wonder why thousands of doctors now recommend Prolong to support healthy blood sugar and cardiovascular health. Listen, guys, right now, Prolong is offering the In Totality listeners 10% off their five-day nutrition program. Go to prolonglife.com slash totality. That's P-R-O-L-O-N life.com slash totality for this special offer. That's prolong.com slash totality. All right, guys, back to the show. You know what I'm saying? Like Paul, Jesus said, like you, you search the scriptures because you think that in them is eternal life, but it is they that testify about me. My so the whole God. point of the Bible is to point to Jesus. So I have a problem. When you, when you open this Bible and miss Jesus, what are we doing? Why are we here? Why are you in the pulpit in the first place? I need to wind down. Let me calm down. So, yeah. It's just not good. <laughs> and what, what do you feel? We need to stop it. Number one, I feel like 
and I told you about this. I, I saw something. I don't know where what I was looking at, but he said that the amount of the false teaching and the amount of the false prophecy prophets and all the things that we're seeing is a form of God's judgment. I think because is. this is what we are desiring. Mm -hmm. It's 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 literally people giving like all the the false teachers and all the things mm -hmm. right. It's that is what the hearts of the people want. Yeah. And that's why they're giving it to us. Yeah. And, and we need to be praying for the right hearts. Yes. Oh, yeah. Like what we saw yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Because in 2 Timothy 4, he says, for the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine. So sound means healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, but according to their own desires, will multiply or accumulate teachers for themselves because they have an itch to hear what they want to hear. I don't like the CSB uh, version of that. But... What was it? Second Timothy, what? Four. Chapter three is connected to chapter four. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Paul says, but know this hard times will come in the last days, times. Mm -hmm. Make note of that. Chapter four, for the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, will multiply teachers for themselves. Okay. Mm -hmm. So people will find teachers who are communicating truth ideas in such a way that it accommodates the character issues that they have right oh so if i have a problem where i love money there is a teacher for me mm -hmm. if i love myself there is a teacher for me yep. if i am greedy there is a teacher for me so a part of the problem is the passions mm -hmm. that are present within people in our world are making room for us to find plenty of options when it comes to teachers who accommodate our flesh. And so that's why they can accumulate teachers because there's a lot of them out there. And so it's, it's just, it's just interest. It's interesting to me. So the bigger issue then isn't necessarily, I mean, it's all bad, <laughs> but, but one of the issues is if we just repent of our passions, mm -hmm. we will not want to listen to those teachers. Mm -hmm. And if we start snatching people out of the grips of these teachers, the teachers won't have a platform anymore. So it's like a, it's a, it's a cyclical relationship that we have. What, what? I'm sorry. That's just me saying this, <laughs> yeah, that, and I think that's another reason why I feel a responsibility in the not compromising. Yes. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. like when I look at you have me reading acts and acts is, <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Yes. And I think one of the biggest revelations, because you, you gave me a bunch of study material on it, and one of them, and I forget which one because I don't ever mm -hmm. be paying attention to mm -hmm. what I'm reading, just it's probably into what it. I'm reading, yeah. um, or who you know wrote it, just what I'm reading. But one of the things that really was so eye-opening to me, mm -hmm. and it just really gets me excited, it mm -hmm. actually just makes me excited, mm -hmm. but um, was the fact that it wasn't, so much of all the things that were happening in Acts as much as far as like the fire and tongues and all the preaching and all the those things were obviously effective. Mm -hmm. But what what was so effective was how they lived. Mm -hmm. It was it what was so effective to the unbeliever yeah. was watching how the believer lived, yeah. how they lived in community, how they dedicated themselves to prayer, mm -hmm. how they dedicated themselves to the teaching of the apostles, how they how they took looked after one another they were selling their land and selling possessions so that other people could have it mm. was that mm. that was a witness to the unbeliever mm -hmm. it wasn't just oh the prophesying and telling you that you're going to be a millionaire yeah. or telling you where your address is or that your mama ate sushi the <laughs> night that she conceived you <laughs> or you know what i mean it wasn't that, that. Was so detailed it was it was the fact that they lived yeah. a very specific way yeah Ho like completely and wholly dedicated to the Lord yeah. and being in community. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's the thing that like, I feel so responsible to mm -hmm. is that like literally this in totality, not just part, like not mm -hmm. just in the way that I teach this mm -hmm. thing or talk about this, mm -hmm. but how I'm living it. Yeah. My relationships reflect how I love God. Yeah. My, how my integrity in my business, yeah. my, all the things, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like um, we're like chasing after signs, miracles, and wonders. Mm -hmm. And I understand. It's interesting. You know, it's interesting to, to see somebody tell you something that they shouldn't know. It's interesting to, you 
you know, experience these really big, I, I think even the increase in like spirituality mm -hmm. in our world, I, it, it makes sense. We're spiritual beings, mm -hmm. right? So I think on one end, people have had church experiences that lack that supernatural essence. And so because it's a part of our makeup, we're, we're trying to find those experiences in counterfeit options. Mm -hmm. That's, but at the same time, I just feel like we need to be looking for simple godliness, mm -hmm. like simple, God, like it is simple for people to just gather around the table and eat, right? Like the breaking of yeah. the bread. It is simple for some people to just get in a room and just pray. Like literally, it, it, it is simple yeah. to just do communion. And that feels like it's not big enough. Yeah. But do you understand how big it is to, to talk to God? Yeah. <laughs> Do you understand how yeah. big it is to eat the bread and drink the wine and re remember Rem that this recognize this represents the broken body of God? Like that's a, that's a profoundly big deal, but we're blind. Yeah. And so the simple stuff doesn't seem as powerful when it's profoundly powerful mm -hmm. that you have human beings living like saints. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Saints. Yeah. Purified, sanctified, yeah. set apart. Yeah. That should not make sense when you read Genesis three. So for you to get to Acts 2 and you see what happens, it, it, it makes sense, though, when you recognize that that happens after the Holy Spirit falls. Yes. And so this is a product of a miracle, mm -hmm. the simple stuff. And uh, and that you can only do that through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I say that because we're chasing the signs, right? But counterfeit stuff. But we're also chasing perverted forms of community mm. so we want community because we're built for it yep. that's in our nature yep. like man is not meant to be alone mm -hmm. right so we we get it through inappropriate relationships we get it through unhealthy friend groups we get it through even certain cultic church structures that's mm -hmm. a kind of we get some people in some tradition they get it through tribalism when it comes to politics right like they want to belong somewhere mm -hmm. and so god has to do a work to say no i've given you a community it's called the church mm. and she is messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, there are sheep and goats in the same place. My God. Right. But the, the real church has a promise that the Lord who started to work in her, cause that's plural. We read that text. Say, the Lord started working in me. He going to fit in. He said, he's talking about the church. Mm -hmm. The one who started to work in the church is going to finish it. So the same hope of sanctification I have my, for myself, I need to have it for Christ's yeah. bride. Right. And you will get that community and that love and that belonging when we just start to, you know, trust God's word. I don't know how we got there. We're talking Where about do we acts. start? Okay. We're talking about acts. Yes. Um, how do you, and what would you say to those who, oh man, I'm trying to be so mindful of how I say this. Say it. I got to be mindful, Jackie, because this is the redo. Okay. <laughs> the remix. <laughs> it might be fine. This is the remix. It might be so, fine. We've been fine the whole time. Okay. We I got a little spicy, but it was. I'm trying to keep it, it mildly spicy. Um, how sometimes it's interesting to me when I, when I see people who say, Oh, I listen to you and I listen to, you know, Jackie. And then they list other people that they listen to. And when I think of that, I see there's such, for me, I know that there's such a big difference. And the only reason why I know that there's difference is because, which I'm so thankful for what? you encouraging me to read <laughs> the book <laughs> read the book let's say it together read read the book the book it's so important and and i think you um my socks look dirty but they're actually they do. but they're a different color they're when gray. i say i, I know, saw your but, socks and i was like i can't they're not dirty they're gray they're not dirty though they're just well they're dirty now you put your feet up and i said whoa uh, they're dirty at the bottom <laughs> But the things are filthy. Not dingy. And I was surprised because you're usually right. very like you're usually very, very particular. But they're I was just I letting everyone that. know that they're great. I'm glad you okay. did. Because I, I looked down and I said, ah. No, offline I was they look, like, that's crazy. They look off white. For you to have put your feet up. I'm like sorry, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm some, sorry, but my, my socks are off white. That was some they're a little dirty at the bottom because I walk around the house and my it doesn't matter. Anyway. It doesn't. 
Sorry, y'all. Sorry. Just cut the wide shot. Go to the individual. Because the, the bottom is dirty. Yeah, right? they are. Because I was walking outside. I walked outside from my when my last guest. I walked them outside. You changed your shirt, but not your socks. Yeah, because I don't want to waste socks. Okay. Go ahead. I'm going to put these up. There we go. Okay, anyway. I, I always find it interesting mm -hmm. how people just mix stuff mm -hmm. and they're like oh i listen and it's like well how do you listen to this person yeah and this person yeah. but i don't think that people's ears have been trained to know the difference yeah. and so what can you say in helping those who want to follow people and listen to people that are preaching and teaching and talking sound doctrine yeah. and how can we point out the difference and i know that takes time because you really have to read the word but yeah. I, oh man, so much of it, it, it really is <clears throat> Bible knowledge. Mm -hmm. Like the more Bible you know, the more error you can discern. Mm -hmm. The only caveat I have with that is that everybody comes to the Bible with frameworks, mm -hmm. right? So your framework can be, I'm a woman, I'm black, I'm American, whatever, whatever. And when you come into the Bible with frameworks, it means that you impose your framework into the text and you understand the text through your framework rather than through the text, through the text framework. So, mm -hmm. for example, if I come to uh, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. One framework I can have is my concept of love. Mm. So when I read the word love, I'm assuming what John means by it mm -hmm. rather than asking the question, what, what does, does John, John mean, mean by, by that? Yeah. So when I say the caveat is if you've been discipled mm -hmm. in a church and a society that has a self-centered understanding of the text, then it might be more like that's a hump you have to get over as you read is that you have to make the the very clear decision. Let me just find God here. Mm -hmm. Not myself. Mm -hmm. You go, you in there. Yeah. But it's not about you. Right? right. So I say that read the Bible, identify the frameworks and impulses you bring to the Bible, submit them under the Bible's authority. So you're able to actually extract what it means and not what you think it means. Yeah. And when you do that, then you're able to listen to certain teaching and be like, huh, Matt, <laughs> he done talk for 40 minutes about me. And when he did bring up God, it was what God could do for me. And when there was an illustration, it was what God, like we didn't even preach the context. The high pitch is crazy. You know, like for, <laughs> you know, like in Romans, I, I, I said this before, a really helpful example is growing up, I always used to hear, no, we need to speak those things that are not uh -huh. as if they were. Uh -huh. People would always use that phrase and that verse to to talk about like word of faith. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I remember I went to church one time and I had a coat and one of the ministers came up to me and they was like, uh, what's going on? I was like, I got a coat. She said, don't speak that. <laughs> I said, don't speak what? She said, you don't speak, you don't speak sickness over yourself. I said, well, my nose is running up, my eyes are itchy, and I got a cough and a sore throat. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm actually just saying what's real and true. Actually. No, she was like, no, you speak those things that are not as if they were. <laughs> and so I was always thinking, mm -hmm. I was interpreting that verse the way it was used until I read it one time, and it was talking about Abraham mm -hmm. being justified by faith, context, mm -hmm. and that he was justified by faith because he believed in the God who could speak those things mm -hmm. that are not as if they were. I said, whoa, <laughs> I've been lied to. I've been hoodwinked and bamboozled. <laughs> For sure. And so that's what's happening all the time. Yeah. Is that because we're not reading text, not even just merely in context, but with God in mind, mm. we're not knowing what the Bible, we don't know what the Bible actually says. Yeah. And if we don't know what the Bible actually says, it affects our faith in the God who wrote the Bible. That's ultimately one of the problems yeah. is that if you don't know your word well, you not only open up the door for deceit, mm -hmm. but you open up the door for you to never actually know God. You My get excited goodness. about him, you praise and you worship and do all the stuff. But when a trial hits, what are you, what resource do you have to believe when you don't know this? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like this is what sustains me when life is hard. Yeah. This is what sustains me when I'm tempted to 
smoke a blunt or be mean or be lustful or be like it's it's this it's this mm-hmm. even this morning i was angry at somebody who did an injustice against me what i want to do is be vengeful and my vengeance is not the kind of vengeance that i'm gonna fight you my vengeance is it's a heart bitterness yes. and resentment yes right and i don't think people ever contribute that to being vengeance. oh that's vengeance because now you've hurt me so I'm putting up a wall mm-hmm. because that's an injustice. So I'm going to protect myself from anybody hurting mm-hmm. me again. That's unhelpful. When I have a God who says, love your neighbor, mm-hmm. right? So where did I go? I went to Psalms 37 where he says, do not be in like, don't be angry, but trust me because I love justice. Right. So the word gave me the security to let that go. Yep. Right. So you got people walking around the church angry, bitter, resentful, and rightly so Mm -hmm. because people have wounded and harmed Mm -hmm. them. But because they don't go to the book, they can't get free. Because David said, I think what did it he was, say? I think it was it David. It might have been David. I think it was David. Who was it? That he said, I store up your word in my heart. So that so I that might I, not sin against you. But that's the only, like, it, it tells me, <laughs> how am I going to, how how do I think I'm going to live a life and end well if I don't know the word? You got to know it. And I have, and not only do I have to know it, because mm-hmm. he didn't say this word that I store up in my brain. Oh. Teach. He said this You're word that I store up You're in my teacher. heart. You're a teacher. You're a teacher. Go ahead. Come on. Because the Bible says uh-huh. that out of the issues of the 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 issues of life flow out of the heart, mm-hmm. right? So out of the abundance of the heart, the mm-hmm. mouth. The God, God is always targeting our hearts. Mm-hmm. So it's not just taking this word and knowing it. Yeah. In our head, yes, but it's storing it yes. in our hearts. Believing Be- what you heard, believing it, yeah, trusting it. Um, the the fall happened because somebody stopped believing, believing. the word. <sighs> Mind you, Satan comes, says, "Did God really, really say you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree?" She like, he said, we can't eat it. Neither can we touch it. So one thing we identify, she's unclear on mm-hmm. what God said because she just added to his commandments. Mm-hmm. He said we could touch it. He never said that in Genesis 1 and 2, sis. Mm-hmm. And so now because you're confused, you don't have clarity on the word of God that actually gives the enemy access to deceive you even more. My God. Okay? So then when he says that God really say, da 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 you trust in his word. So you're always going to believe something. It's just who you believe. My God. (laughs) You're going to believe somebody. (laughs) So she just, she traded her belief in the Lord and in his word and placed it on Satan himself. So some of us are in the position where when we come against anything, we are believing somebody, Mm -hmm. either ourselves, which means we're believing the devil Mm -hmm. because he's giving you a lie about yourself that maybe, maybe the lie is yourself sufficient to fight every battle. That's the lie. That's satanic. So you put your faith in him. But the Bible says that you're not self-sufficient. He, we, Come on. This, we got this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. Right? It's exhausting to be self-sufficient. That's why you're depressed. That's why you're anxious. That's why you're tired. That's why you're exhausted. Ex- the ba- the, ain't enough concealer in the world to hide them bags, sis. Just give cash to care for God. Cast it. Because he cares for you. And guess what? The peace that's surpassing all understanding will guard your heart. That's the Bible. Guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Then you got Jesus and Luke. When the devil comes and tempts him, he don't got no opinions. Nope. He he don't got, he ain't sing no. He, what he do? He ain't go to Instagram. He couldn't go to Instagram. He <laughs> quoted from Deuteronomy. Yeah. He quoted the Bible. So even Jesus holds the Bible in high esteem. How you think you going to fight the devil with plants? and rocks <laughs> and sleep right like i'm just gonna go to sleep i just i the depression and the anxiety and the fear and i'm just gonna no he, he's still gonna be there when i'm you gonna go up. on vacation he, he in there he and you i don't have visions of demons sitting next to me in my bed so even sleep won't keep the devil away from me and so at some point my god at some point i just need his word that's where the power is that and was exciting it's, this is exciting <laughs> And oh my his, goodness! And his word 
yeah. also says what that his it? word will not return to him void. Because it's that part. It will do. It will do the what very thing out to accomplish. that he sent it out to accomplish. Yes, ma'am. Period. Yes, ma'am. And you have to remember that. Yes, ma'am. Sometimes it's not even so much the, the, the trials that are hard. Yeah. It's remembering that he's Lord. It's remembering his word. Yes. And remembering who he is. Yes. In the trials, yes. in the suffering, yes. in the hard times. It's just the remembering yes. that although I might feel this, although I might be sad today, although this person pissed me off, <laughs> although this person completely embarrassed me, yes. completely humiliated me, mm -hmm. God is still God. Yeah. And because I know his word, yeah. my heart, it's because it's stored in my heart, yes. the Holy Spirit reminds me of the word. Yes. That he's never gonna leave me or forsaken me. Um, uh, come on, say it again. No, seriously, say that. That that he's near to the brokenhearted yeah, and those you, who are crushed in spirit. He's he'll never leave me or forsaken me. Like those are things yes. that if I don't know his word, yes. how am I going to remind my flesh of yeah. what's true? Yeah. I I wonder if <clears throat> I wonder if we've lived so long without relying on God is that it just seems easier yeah to to neglect this because yeah. it is easier because there's also the other side of the coin that when you know his word you also know what he commands of you that part so, so there's, now there's a responsibility yeah so it's like yes his word sustains me and his word strengthens me but his word also summons me. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think that's some of the fear mm -hmm. is that I don't want, I don't want to know all that he wants of me. That right? ignorance is bliss. Yeah. Type of mentality. Yeah. But it's killing you. <laughs> like, cause you, cause you gonna have to come to the realization one way or another. Cause the wages of sin is death. Right. And so it, it's, it's killing you and it's unsatisfying. Yeah. Sin is unsatisfying. My God. Like, that's why God, God says in Jeremiah, like, my people have committed two evils. Like, they, some about, they go, the, <laughs> they fill the broken sisters with water that can't even hold water, like, with mm -hmm. stuff that can't hold water. Where it's like, God is just not, he's not just Lord and King. He's also bread. Mm. Like, you have to think about the metaphor that he decided to use of himself. Yeah. Bread and water meaning that is an in internal filling that yeah. he is able to offer right yeah. have you ever been thirsty before megan ashley it's a really horrible experience like it's just like, yeah, it's, it's like just, it's just it's just trash but to say i am the living water <laughs> living water yeah I, like it's a water that will fill you and will not run out it's overflowing yeah and so the the word is the means by which you not only get strength, you not only get a sword to fight off the evil one, mm -hmm. but you also get knowledge for how God satisfies those who, those who seek him. Mm. And I think that's important because we're all very thirsty, but we're just going to the wrong resources. We're just, we're thirsty. So you obviously need them. Y'all need to go and watch the podcast that y'all did, about, you and Preston did, uh, about John the Ford. woman at the well, because that really- That's pretty important. That really got me excited. That's good. It was really good. So you be to... watching my our podcast? I mean, why why would I not, Jackie? What, what what would make you think that I wouldn't do that? Number one, you're a sound <laughs> teacher. Number two, you're my friend. Why would I not? I know you don't watch. Jackie don't watch nothing but god dang documentaries. And I think that's really it. I don't know. <laughs> she watched Food Network and Food Network. Yes. Yeah. She, she's, but yes, why would I not do that? I just assumed you wouldn't. Thank you, though. Anyway, <laughs> Jackie irritates me. I'm going to, we have some questions from Patreon. Okay. And um, they, they lit my phone up with questions. So what you asked question last night, last night? So when we did this before, did you ask some questions? No, it's the remix. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Switching things up around okay. here, sister. Um, so the Patreon community knew that you were going to be my guest because remember I did the all of God that you were trying to hack into my what zoom, my zoom. So the... that's what we need to talk about because I asked where the camera, where's it? This one, <clears throat> I asked Megan, <laughs> she was doing this little book club or whatever. I said, send me the link. 
And she said, no. I said, why? Because why would I do that? Why wouldn't you? In, in the same way you had some shock and awe at the <laughs> fact that you would listen to, to the, you know, that I, I was curious, like, oh, you listen to podcasts? That's crazy. Like, because you've been doing this for a long time, Jackie. What does that mean? That you're, you're just used to doing that. I'm not used to teaching. And so you are the te- you know I call you the teacher of all teachers. Why would I allow the teacher of all teachers, Rabbi? Are you not used co- are you not used to people supporting you? <laughs> Is that a trauma that we need to work through? Um no, I'm I feel like I've received support. Okay. So I I'm, I'm only saying let me support because you said that you would help me in teaching i did and until that happens i don't think you get to experience (laughs) me figuring it out i don't think that that's fair i could argue but i'm not going to Uh, what if i that might not be edifying (laughs) to your people what's the argument it's ultimately so what like (laughs) (laughs) like give me the link so i can you can, okay i will and i, I don't mind like sending teaching, to you you weren't afterwards. teaching a sermon it was it was he was working through a book but i that one was the intro so we really weren't getting into the book i went through like introduction i gave some scripture about fearing the lord we talked through some scripture so it kind of was a bible study type right. of thing right but to be which f- means that there there's an insecurity for sure, and insecurity. because of the insecurity, 100%. you won't allow me 100%. to just show support 100%. when I'm not Correct. entering into the, I'm <laughs> not entering into the Zoom call to judge you or assess you. I know you're not. I'm there to show up for you. But and, I know and, me. I'm going to say because you are a teacher and one of the greatest <clears throat> that this world will ever have. Okay. I will be asking you because I also want to be better. Guess so what? I'm going to say, Guess what? critique Guess me. What? I will respect your boundary. <laughs> Okay, you remember I, but 40 I have, minutes ago? We yes. Talked, that's but a boundary, I would it's say. Not a, it's not some... I have a compromise, a but I have a compromise. Which is? That I think will be helpful. <laughs> what is it? I, I will send you uh-huh. the recording of... No. The, because I want you to... No. Li- what do you mean, I no? That be, way you can fast I forward through stuff? I want to be live with everybody else. But it's like you're live. So what's the difference, Megan? What's the difference with... Because with one is actually happening in real time, and one, it already happened. And what's then the I difference? Can do- you're not there. What's the difference? I'm not aware that you're there. Okay. Your presence. I told you. I told and this I told girl you, I will come into the Zoom call with my name, Stephanie Kruger. You, 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 Stephanie Kruger I, is. A I will crazy have an alias. Name. It so, is a so crazy it wouldn't name. even. You wouldn't even see JHP. None of that. It wouldn't even. I trigger. did see somebody on there that was like iPhone. I said, if Jackie is trying to hack into this, I'm not going to pay fifteen dollars <laughs> to see the Zoom call. I'm gonna sign up to do that. That's crazy. See, talk about support. I didn't. I didn't spend a lot. <laughs> you ain't telling people I bought you a whole uh, trough of lip devices. Listen, I was going through such a hard day. I was going through a hard. Uh, just it was rough. <laughs> <laughs> I said, look. I'm going to just send you some stuff from Sephora. Jackie uh, sent me like six different lip glosses to cheer me up. That was so nice. I thought it was nice. That was very nice. Not only did she do that, she actually physically showed up. Like, Oh, yeah. And she didn't give me an option. That's a real good friend. Automatic. You said, which, I'm showing up. Which is up. worth talking about. Because we've supposed to talk about that anyway. Because, okay, I wanted to... Okay, before we get into these uh, questions, we... we we had this great conversation. I was like, man, we should talk about mm. this. Um, and and I want to go back to something that you put on threads. You said, who's going to write <laughs> the book on friendship trauma? Yeah. And then I and and it was interesting because both of us have gone through relational changes yeah. just in our relationships with other people, and we've gone through changes in that. And um I was like, you know, I feel like in our relationship, the Lord is giving us a different way of seeing relationships mm-hmm. and, and redeeming what friendship looks like yeah. for us. Um, and <clears throat> and uh, we started talking about the scripture that talks about carrying, for, mm-hmm. carrying one another's burdens, mm-hmm. taking on one another's burdens, and how I, I was telling you, I feel like the only way that we're able to do that, it, it gives us this open invitation to doing what the Lord says and casting our cares on him Mm -hmm. so that we actually have the capacity 
to take on the burdens of other people. Yeah. And I feel like in our culture and society right now, it's like, I don't have the capacity for that. Mm -hmm. I don't have the capacity. Mm -hmm. I don't have the capacity for that. Why settle when finding a doctor? It is your health after all. Enter ZocDoc, the place where you can find and book tens of thousands of top tier doctors all with verified patient reviews. Don't settle. Go for the best and find the right doctor for you. With ZocDoc, you've got more options than you know. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for the ones that take your insurance, located near you, and treat almost every and any condition you're searching for. These doctors all have verified reviews from actual real patients, not robots. The typical wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is between just 24 and 72 hours. That's it. You can even score same-day appointments, guys. You can find the doctor you want and book them immediately with just a few app taps. No more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist. I use ZocDoc and you should too. Go to ZocDoc.com slash totality and download the ZocDoc app for free and find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash totality. ZocDoc.com slash totality. All right, guys, back to the show. But it's like, I. but it's what the Lord yeah. requires. Yeah. It's another reflection of the lover of self energy and our loneliness, our collective loneliness, because if you're, if you, if you never have the capacity for anybody, most likely people won't have the capacity for you. Right. And so when you end up in need and burdened, no one even feels that camaraderie, camaraderie or loyalty or just love to give you that too. Yeah. You know, um, but I think, I think with you, you know, we talked through how the situation was like, I, I, because we're, we're still learning each other and all the things it's like, she has a need, she has a burden. And on some, at some level I can give you space and be welcomed into that. But I also know that sometimes people have so much going on that they don't even have the 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 mindset to welcome people in yeah. so it's like no nah, to invite you in yeah yeah it's like no nah, i'm gonna just come over <laughs> <laughs> literally yeah i'm gonna just i'm gonna just come so yeah and and i think what what it goes back to something that i, I think is just very it was the first episode i did it in totality when i talked about jay and jordan but just talking about presence mm -hmm. and how important that is yeah. and it's not like you came over and we prayed and we went through the book of acts no we like watched we who got married or why did i get <laughs> why did married? i get Which married was miserable <laughs> but i was like if this is showing up for her by watching this stupid movie <laughs> this dumb movie i will sit here and not complain but you got I wasn't you came sarcastic at the, or nothing you came at the end of it and was over no nah, it was like that last 50 minutes before <laughs> It was it, okay, and you and you and you suffered through it, and it was I appreciated yeah. it. But anyway, we started watching another movie, but then we just ended up talking for like a few hours mm -hmm. and just talking through things. And I think um, what I appreciated about it is like when you first got there, I don't think I was like in a talking mood. I think I just kind of was, was still, yeah, <laughs> I was just here mm -hmm. after bawling my eyes out at church. Mm -hmm. um, and just side note. Jackie and Jordan are the worst comforters ever. The way that they comfort physically, it's literally pat pat. They're there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> They're there, bucko. Hang in there. Literally, they are li the same. Now, I am literally at church, like weeping. Jackie reaches over. She's like... Uh, to my defense, I didn't know what to do. Because some people don't want to hug. You know what I'm saying? They want, they want they sp yeah. they want their space, you know? So I'm just trying to determine, like, I'm going to give you something. I don't know what else to give you. But I just appreciate the presence and, okay. like, allowing me to, because after crying at church for three hours, mm -hmm. it felt like I was, number one, exhausted, but then 
you were patient in allowing me mm -hmm. to get to a place where I could talk about it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And even the, that one time that you came over my house, we were getting ready to go out of town and mm -hmm. I was pissed upstairs mm -hmm. and you were like, okay, why are you yelling? And I was like, cause I'm irritated. I was no, like, cause I talk, cause loud I talk loud and I'm irritated. And you were like, so then we got in the car, you were like, I think you're just irritated. <laughs> I think you're just irritated, and that's okay. That's we can right. talk through that. That's fine. But I think it just shows, I, I don't know, I've experienced just a different level of what it means to share mm. our, the burdens mm -hmm. of a friend. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And some of that, <clears throat> one, so much of the way I am friends, I'm not the greatest friend to everybody, let's be clear. <laughs> Because some people have friendship ex expectations of me that don't deserve it. And so it just gets weird. But I think for the the very, 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 very few. We get it, Jackie. For the very few. Um, I think what I've learned in my relationship with Preston and my relationship with the Lord and in therapy is that you love people better when you're not self-absorbed mm -hmm. so so many of the behaviors of people communicate something about our own worth and value that then allows us not to be able to show up well so for example when i came over the house what i could have done is try to pull information out of you how are you feeling do you want to talk about it da, 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 da. and it's like but that would have been to self-soothe me you know what I'm saying? Like silence can feel uncomfortable and mm -hmm. awkward. And so people want to feel useful and the way they want to feel useful is by trying to fix, but it's like, nah, I'm going to just be here and give her the room to express herself however she wants to. Mm -hmm. But that means that I'm, I'm putting all of that on your plate instead of trying to soothe my own mm -hmm. insecurities. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so I think the, the more people become, just selfless, I think the better friends people can be. Yeah. Now, if you was one of them people that I felt like wouldn't be able to do the same, we would have to have a conversation. That part. So that's, I think that's legitimate to say, yeah. you know, there still needs to be mutual care. Absolutely. Um, depending on the season. And I think that that, I think Christ being in the center of the relationship mm -hmm. gives you the capacity to do that. Yeah. And I think it also if I know that the Lord is commanding me to love my neighbor, mm -hmm. right, and love others and consider them above myself mm -hmm. and to take on the burdens of the people that I love, yeah. right, if I'm commanded to do so, yeah. then I that means that I have a responsibility yes. in my relationship with the Lord. I have a responsibility. I really like your highlight. Now I've been waiting two hours. It's like, because it's, because is it new? It's the one that I got you. It's new. Yes, yeah. I got you the one, and I got I like me it. the. Have did you use the one that I used? Not yet. I wasn't gonna try it out on no in totality. <laughs> <laughs> Had me looking like a golden calf. I was not gonna do that. I need. To, <laughs> I gotta try that out when I'm not on the camera first. I'm sorry. Does that make sense? Yes. I don't even know where I'm at, but does that make sense? Yes. We have to have. We have to make sure that we're prioritizing our relationship with the Lord so that we can do what He called us to do in caring for other people. And most times, the people who say they don't have the capacity to love and care for other people is because they don't have the discipline to have a relationship with the Lord. That's facts. Hence, why being a lover of self is going to be so detrimental to our, our society. Because it's gonna, it, it affects everything. I mean, it's already been affecting it. America is a very individualistic culture, yeah. right? And so the loneliness, the anxiety, the even I, I would, I would bet that even the pace at which people are getting married now is a byproduct of this individualism that mm. we're embracing, right? Mm. Because partnership isn't as emphasized as, as much as it used to be. I don't need you to have, you know what I'm saying? So, which is why relationships also are. Yeah. ending as fast as they're ending yeah because it's like i'm just in this for the effectuation yeah not for the love and commitment yeah and as soon as this doesn't serve me anymore we're moving in a direction that's scary yeah uh but god is god said he said that was going to happen. yeah all right i have some questions ready these are for you they were like I said, light my phone up. If someone has wronged you and you struggle with forgiveness towards them, what's the steps after actually forgiving them? Let's say I've forgiven them. Do I technically have to still communicate with them in a way? 
I mean, I think it's case by case. <clears throat> I think some people, so we forgive out of obedience to the Lord, mm-hmm. right? He said mm-hmm. forgive. And forgiveness is not emotional per se. Mm-hmm. Um, so to forgive doesn't mean you don't feel pain, hurt, irritation, anger, anger. Right? It's really the irritation. Ir- yeah, irritation. I, like irritation. <sighs> or rage. That's the thing too. Yeah. Um, so you, to forgive is I, I'm not, I'm making the this decision not to treat somebody according to what they deserve. Mm-hmm. So forgiveness has an element of justice attached mm. and that's what makes it difficult mm. is because I'm not giving you what you actually are owed, mm. but that's what Jesus did for us. He does not treat us according to what our sins deserve because we've gotten grace. Um, now I think the practical aspect is w- the kind of offense I think warrants, the way we engage thus far, right? So like, if you, I don't know, like, if you stole my car, bro, <laughs> probably ain't gonna give you my keys no more. Yeah, like, I probably right. not gonna. Right. But if you just hurt my feelings, yeah, that's different. And yeah. so I think the, 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 the severity of the offense is what determines how we move forward. forward. Right. Yeah. And ask for wisdom. Yes. Because God created you and them. Yes. Yeah, don't make these decisions alone. alone. Yeah. Okay, this is from Lakeisha from Dallas, Texas. Miss Perry, Mrs. Perry, that's what she said. Not Jack, Mrs. Perry. Mm-hmm. Okay, period. Perspective on Christian rap. I love music with a banging beat. Banging. And has, that literally it says that. <laughs> I love music with a banging beat. And have stopped listening to secular rap and have found some really good Christian rap music. Does Christian rap music still glorify God? Thanks for the wisdom. Yeah. I guess I, there's an underlying assumption that I can't discern. Neither I. Because to say question. still, does it still glorify God must mean is rap inherently, inherently wrong. bad. Yeah. Um, well, God made music. God made sound. God made drums. God made art. God made rhythm. God made cadence. Right. And so all Christian hip hop is doing is appropriating what God already made Mm -hmm. in such a way that it glorifies his name and edifies the saints. So, yes. Which the Bible says that our gifts are supposed to Mm -hmm. serve other people and Mm -hmm. glorify the Lord. So, like, if that's your gift, use it to glorify God. Yeah. Now, to me, the bigger question isn't, is it glorifying, but is it all good? Mm. And a lot of it isn't. But there's a lot of people that are. There's There's a lot of great rappers out there. You said you were getting in the studio soon, so maybe yes. you can give us godly. I hope so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One more question. Um, how do you teach your children about Jesus in the way that they understand? So I think identifying their intellectual capacities, right? And so the way I teach the babies is different than the way I teach Eden. Mm-hmm. Um, when Eden was two, we would, a, a good example. So I took Eden with me when I was, uh, I had to teach at Passion for something. This is during the pandemic. And it was after my book, Holier Than Now. So I was teaching on holiness. And to the older people in the room, I say God's holiness represents two things, that God is transcendent, so he sits above and beyond all created things, and that he is morally pure, which means that he is ethically right. When it came to Eden, she's five, right? (laughs) And I asked her, I said, did you understand anything I said? And she said, absolutely not. So I'm like, how do I I explain God's holiness Mm -hmm. to her? And I was like, okay, for God to be holy, that means that he is good, so he does good things. He's nice. He's kind. All right. That's mm-hmm. the moral purity. And it means that God is special. He's mm-hmm. different. That, that's the transcendence. And so I think a part, is, a part of it is understanding where your child is mentally. Mm-hmm. But also you need to know the content in such a way where you can make it plain. Yeah. So the, the better you know a subject, the more plain you can be. Yeah. Um, but also I think uh, Jen Wilkins, she talked about how when children are young, it's, what did, what did she say? It's high frequency, low depth. Yeah. When they're older, it's high depth, low frequency. So the younger they are, it's just little nuggets mm-hmm. all the time, right? Mm-hmm. But it ain't that deep. The older they get, it's not a lot of little nuggets because there's a lot going on. Mm-hmm. They, they go to high school, they got all the things, but you have more opportunity to go deeper. Mm-hmm. And so that helps you to categorize it where it's like, you ain't got to have Bible studies, yeah. but just be talking just be about talking. the Lord yep. all the all time. The time. <laughs> I love that. Um, all right, we're wrapping up. 
what do you did you did you get all your you said you wanted to ask me questions did you get your questions out i don't think i did i'm sorry i didn't engage with with no it's it's not about me how are you you. i'm great i don't uh, that's not a good answer how are you i really am good okay i'm i'm at peace okay the lord is good Wow. These are the most savedest responses. I don't have another response. It's I'm fine. great. I, I just, have one situation happening that I'm irritated with. Okay. But I'm, you know, okay. trying not to be irritated with it. All right. Well, I just want to say oh God. that <laughs> I am thankful for our friendship. Same. I'm thankful for our relationship. I'm glad the Lord uh, connected us. And that's enough affirmation for today. <laughs> That's the best you're going to get out of me. Well, let me say that I appreciate you. you. Okay, I appreciate you. I love you. You are my friend, and I'm so thankful that you are because, man, how many of us have been? My God. (laughs) Fake the other word, friends. Before we wrap up, two things. One, how can you, what encouragement do you feel like this culture and society needs right now? Like, what, what can you encourage the people with? In this time, it's going to sound strange, but God is real. Mm -hmm. And the reality of God means that nothing like, yeah, like if he real, then he going to come back. If he real, what he says about himself is true. Mm -hmm. So when he says that he's faithful and says that he's good, when it says that, like he condescended and became flesh. It even means that God loves human beings. Mm -hmm. So even your humanness, God doesn't despise that. What he hates is the sin part. Yeah. Right. And so that's what I would say is God is real. And therefore everything God has communicated about himself in the Bible is real too. It's life changing. It really really is. What, um, I usually do a, a, a journal prompt. Oh. For everyone after. Do you journal, Jackie? No. Okay. <laughs> not, 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 not at all. Um, but if you were to write something, if you were to encourage someone to write and journal, maybe this, because a lot of people, journaling is their form of prayer. Mm-hmm. Um, what would be a good prompt? Like if someone were to ask, like, how do I start to pray? How do I? Um, so a prompt, is it like processing? Like an idea? Yeah. What's a good journal prompt? After this episode, what would be a good journal prompt for them to kind of process? Just as an application of what we discussed today, Mm -hmm. I would look at 2 Timothy 4, Mm -hmm. the list of lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, da, 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 da. What in that list is a besetting sin for you? Mm -hmm. So it's it's a sin that you're always succumbing to. Try to interrogate what is it I don't believe about God that is influencing this pattern of sin? Mm. So if it is, uh, I am a lover of self. I love myself. I talk about myself all the time. I think about myself. I listen to sermons about myself, my purpose, my this, my that, da, 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 da. Underneath that self-love is most likely self-hatred. Yikes. You probably actually don't love yourself. So you have a lot of shame. You don't feel valuable. You don't feel important. You don't feel... Uh, dignify. And so your, your egocentric approach to life is a way of restoring the self-loathing that Mm. you walk in. And so the way you identify how to believe God is to ask the question, what does God think about me? What does he say about me? Go through some texts, identify what God has to say about you, and then ask the Holy Spirit to apply that word to your heart. And I think that will loosen up your grip from narcissism. Well, there you guys go. There's your journal prompt. (laughs) Have fun with that one. (laughs) Um, Thank you for being here and doing the remix. Um, That has to be, please don't do it. Please, Jackie, do not. I hate, I hate it. I hate it, but I appreciate you. Um, Listen, guys, if you want Jackie's devotional that we loved upon waking, please go to my Amazon storefront. She says oh, she's so not. Get, so you get some money from that. I mean, I had to be smart. Uh, I mean, I ain't mad at you. I'm out here. I'm not mad at you. <laughs> you come, you become an Oprah. Negroes buy books that you be talking about. You can promote that book every day. I got four children. Go Listen, ahead. this book was amazing. It's not even a book. It's a devotional. It helped me get through 60 days of just 
leaning into the intimacy of the Lord with scripture, um, all the things. So make sure you guys get it upon waking. I've been begging her to do another one. She refuses. I can't beg her anymore. So maybe if y'all buy them and go post, uh, make leave a comment under one of her posts or something and beg her for another one. I don't know. No. She won't do it. Still won't let them. Yeah, she won't do it. But we appreciate you guys. We love you so much. We pray that this episode was able to help you in some type of way. I'm pretty sure this was going to be a part one and two. So, um, because we went for... It's a minute. Yeah, we went for a while, yeah. but it was all good stuff. Yeah. I'm so excited because Jackie is not long-winded. So the fact that we were able to get through two episodes is crazy. I love you guys. Make sure you follow all things Jackie Hill Perry. Um, the Perrys are going on tour. So by the time you guys see this, I'm thinking the tour will probably just be about to start. So if you haven't gotten your tickets, make sure you get your tickets. Um, make sure you watch with the Perrys on YouTube. Make sure you buy the books. All the things. Just all the things. We love you guys and we'll see you next time.